Thailand. Yeah, we're, we, uh, we got up this morning just, just to um, cram in one more practice before we head to Hawaii tomorrow morning, bright and early. Um, pleased with the game yesterday. I, I thought that there was some improvement in our defense, uh, our sense of urgency. Um, I thought also the beginning of the game was much more purposeful than probably any that we've played so far this year. Just in a sense of executing early, making extra passes, not being too anxious, um, and making what I consider the hard play instead of the easy one. I thought we did the easy things uh, yesterday that made us look more cohesive. Um, but everything starts in practice, as, as all coaches will tell you. And I think that we were able to string along a couple of really quality practices before we played yesterday. Um, and things are starting to, to slow down a little bit for the, for the young ones, and, and they're starting to process the things that maybe we were talking about the whole time, but until they saw it on film against an opponent, uh, it didn't necessarily register. And I think it's starting to register. I, I wouldn't even begin to say that we're where we need to be, but I think we're getting, we're closing the gap a little bit to where we can start to, to, to work on the detail um, and improve every day. I'm excited about Hawaii uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, obviously it's a, it's an island and it's beautiful, but also to uh, to match up with the three teams that we do, um, starting with NC State, and then we move from there the next day and go to North Texas and. The next day, uh, play Hawaii on their home court. So uh, it'll be really challenging in, in several areas for us, but I think that it's necessary. Um, we practice three days in a row, but we haven't obviously played three games in a row. So I think it'll be it'll be interesting to see what our mental toughness looks like and our focus over over that span of time. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I think I think we're up to the challenge. How do you guys get involved in this uh, showcase? Do you have a relationship with Hawaii? Do they reach out to you? How does this kind of happen? Um, I, I think that all of us that are in college basketball know that every few years it's nice to take uh, the student athletes to some type of tournament. Uh, there's, you know, they're they're all over the all over the place. Uh, there's there's a traditional one in Hawaii that we're attending. Uh, there's one in the Bahamas, one in the Virgin Islands. Um, we played in Florida last year. So I think that it's just an opportunity to get a lot of teams um, also celebrate the holiday together and get them all in one place where you can get some competitive games under your belt before before finals, really. I mean, uh, even though we, we get back, uh, we have a week before finals begin, it's really a, a pretty good stretch for us academically that gets pretty tough once you start, start the, the beginning of December. So. Honestly, you're trying to cram in as many games as you can, I think, to get game experience and prep before you start to get into thinking about conference play in January. And, uh, what kind of test do you expect right out of the bat from NC State? Oh, a really good one. <laughs> uh, they're, they're extremely good. Uh, we, we went to work on NC State immediately after our game yesterday, and um, they're very, very good. They're very solid at every position. Um, they can score in the post. They they shoot the three really well, and I think they're they're as solid of a team defensively as we've seen so far. Just one through five, and then the players that come off the bench. Um, again, we've seen a, a couple of really good defensive teams that that had a great game plan against us, and hopefully we've learned some things from those. Bob and Kurt. You mentioned starting the game with a purpose and and not being too anxious. I'm curious if. Even though it's not an elite, pro, you know, Southern's not an elite program. Is that something you can look back on and take your kids back to that game and say, you know, you weren't anxious against Southern. Why are you anxious in mm -hmm. a bigger game? You know, is this is that game something your team kind of needed with the the rough, a little bit of a rough start? Oh, I think we definitely needed it because even though, I mean, you might obviously understand that they're not at the same talent level necessarily. I think they were real well prepared and well coached and they expect to win. Um, but I, I think you can look at all of our previous games and say that it didn't matter what the level of competition was. We weren't exactly ready to play when the ball was tipped, whether that be anxiousness or inexperience. It's still what it 
it, what it, it's what it was, no matter who the opponent was. And I think the thing you can look back to yesterday was that we had a different mental approach. And to me, it wasn't as much about who the opponent was yesterday. It was more about what have we been working on and how can we carry over the things we've been doing in practice onto the court during a game. And it looked a little bit more like a team that I'm used to as far as just being ready to go, just play, just be ready to play, be aggressive, try to set the tempo. And I thought that we tried to do that yesterday. So hopefully they can carry that over. I know your last two opponents haven't been in the order of Arizona and some other mm -hmm. teams you're going to play. You know, how important is building just the confidence within that they can play the game well and together? Oh, I think it's very important. I, I mean, confidence is, is everything with young people and with teams. And um, cohesiveness is really important. And I think the fact that we were able to start the same group two games in a row get into somewhat of a rotation that looked normal and comfortable um, will move us along also. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to start that lineup, you know, every game, but it did, I think, give us a little bit of cohesiveness to, to walk out there with the same group. Um, and then again, the players come off the bench at kind of at a time that they're starting to get comfortable. They know they're going in. They know, they know the rotation a little bit. Um, although it, you know, it may not be set, but I think, I think that was helpful yesterday, and we looked, we just looked a little bit more comfortable with, kind of who we are, who we're trying to be, not who we are. And as far as the identity, you're getting double doubles out of Charlie and Joiner. Seems like on a regular basis. That, I guess that is who this team is, and you're going to go through your front court and. Um, is that I, your identity? You think? I, I think it needs to be, just from the standpoint of. And it was one of the things that we addressed, Kirk, after the Arizona game, mm -hmm. was just the simple fact that those two have – they're our, quote, unquote, most experienced players that haven't been injured. And even Joyner was out those couple of weeks, you know, those 10 days before we opened up with South Florida. But bottom line is she had been with us all summer and all fall. So you almost have to go back to that. I mean, I'm not saying we don't have good guards. I mean, obviously we do. But if – if you can play inside out when you have players that are capable of, of scoring, then it does open up other things for, for your guards, and then your guards start to gain a little confidence. And, and I think that resonated with them after the Arizona game, that we just didn't take enough time to maybe play off of, play off of them. And, um, and, and they're getting really comfortable playing with each other, too. I think they're, again, back to just a little bit of cohesiveness starting to happen. Yeah, you know, Kirk took my question, but um, <laughs> God, I hate him. Um, Jorner, y'all um, should stop hanging out together then. That's what my wife says, but I work with him. Um, Jorner, um, is that as good as she? Is that as well as she can play? Uh, she seems to, to kind of be comfortable taking it to the rack and and not shooting as many outside shots. Um, I think she still wants to. For sure, but I do think that she feels confident. You know, it, it, I mean, as much as we all want to say and think that players are 100% confident in themselves, sometimes I think that they need a little success to to feel good about. Okay, I've put in some work, but is it translating in the games? And I think Joiner's had that happen some, and I think she's starting to enjoy. Um, the process of, of practice and where can I establish myself in the games and it just seems like she's just comfortable as far as what she's trying to get accomplished and I don't mean that in a bad way I mean comfortable for a lot of coaches would mean a bad thing but I mean you do, do need players to be comfortable with what their role is going to be and and what they can accomplish for their team and I think she's very confident in that right now. Uh, Karen, this, the veterans have been on some kind of cool trips, but this is kind of mm -hmm. next level cool. How do you get them as excited about three games as a location, but let them enjoy what might be a <clears throat> once in a lifetime experience? I think it is for a lot of players. It is a once in a lifetime experience. And, and as was the Italy trip that we took uh, in the off season a few years ago, 
as much as you'd like to think they're all going to travel the world, the reality of it is they're not. And there's a majority of them that this is their one chance to to go to Hawaii and, and see Pearl Harbor and go to a luau and do some of those really cool things that they may never experience again. And you want to make sure that you can walk that fine line between letting them have a good time and making sure they also know it's a business trip and you're there to play basketball. Um, you know, it's always, I mean, we do have a young team, and we, but we do have some also, some of the young ones have traveled abroad quite a bit and do understand when to lace your shoes up and get ready to go. And um, I, I'm impressed so far with this team's willingness to try to prepare and be ready to play. And I don't think that, you know, we, I don't think that we'll have a problem with that. Um, we'll, we'll share, we'll mix in a little bit of fun with, with uh, business, but I, I think they'll be okay. It's a good learning experience for him, Roger. I mean, regardless that, you know, you have to go to the tournament and play three games in a row and, uh, you know, in the Big 12 tournament, there's several situations that this will give them a chance to look back on. That, granted, Kansas City doesn't have palm trees. I don't know how many families are going to be traveling with you, but what is the, yeah. what are your guys' plans for Thursday and what will you guys, how will you guys be spending the holiday? A lot of families, uh, as far as our staff, uh, are taking a, a lot of their family members. So we'll have quite a few people there, I think. Um, I think I, we asked them today how many families. I think we had three or four players that's families are going to be there. So um, it, it'll be a nice time to, to enjoy um, a family setting, so to say. Uh, Thanksgiving Day is usually when you have a tournament like that, they have a, a banquet where all of the teams attend the, attend the banquet and they, they feed everyone uh, a traditional Thanksgiving meal. Uh, so I, that's one that I would say the players will never think that's, it, that's better than their mom's home cooking, uh, and, and I would agree with that. So uh, we enjoy the time together, and th it gives them a chance to, to kind of mingle with the other teams and say hello to each other before you go to go to battle against each other. But it's always an it's always an enjoyable atmosphere. It's outdoors usually, so it's it's pretty festive. Do you have an update on Jay or Audrey? Audrey's still in the same protocol, uh, moving along, uh, but you know, again, just one of those processes that takes a little bit of time. Do not have an, an update on Shay other than she did get a whack in the nose yesterday and. Uh, is going through some testing today, so we, we don't know whether she'll be available at the tournament or not yet. We probably won't know that till we take off tomorrow. Taylor, how's she doing? Celeste, she's doing well. Yeah. Doing well. I think she's she, she's starting to settle in a little bit. I think and not be so anxious. Mm -hmm. uh, or, I mean, for some freshmen, it's just the surprise of how physical the game is and pace uh, along with the preparation that's required. So I think she'll, she'll continue to get better. Uh, one, th one thing that I try to stress with young players is don't try to be perfect, you know, and don't try to do it all. Um, just, you know, be simple. Um, and, and I think she's started to slow down a little bit and let, let some things come to her, which most young players have to figure out. But I do like where she's. I like where she's at right now. Will you like or not like facing North Texas and facing? That's a hard one. <laughs> That's a hard one. Uh, obviously, I, I love Jay Lee to death, and um, it's fun, but it's hard. I mean, you know, it's at the same time you're. It's a little anxious feeling to play against um, a coworker, but but it's also enjoyable to be around them, and we'll see them at the banquet, and um, it's she's always got a smile on her face, so it'll be good to see her. Happy Thanksgiving, Coach. Happy Thanksgiving. Do you, uh, what are you thankful for? And um, what's your favorite Thanksgiving dish, Coach? Hmm. Um, thankful for, I think more than anything, for family. Uh, just, you know, it, it, last year experiencing a loss of, a loss of a parent uh, puts perspective on, on uh, holidays in particular. So the family that you do and can surround yourself around, I think, is really, really important. Um, and it resonates with me a little bit more than it used to. 
and then you know just realizing that your team is your family and your staff and um, those are the people that we spend the most time with and and to have the opportunity to do that together in Hawaii um, I'm, I'm pretty thankful for um, favorite dish gosh I, I can't get away from my mom's dressing for sure uh, that's it was it's different it's um, it's a little more country for those of you that grew up in the country you know some some people's dressing has the big chunks of bread in it and then some's a little bit more uh, moist my mom's was was real moist and you can't it, it was good it was good that was by far my favorite dish no <laughs> no I can't make a lot of things that she made a lot uh, that, isn't that how it is? You can't. You, you don't really know. Should they have magic. Your your moms have magic as far as their dishes. I don't think they have recipes. I think they just throw stuff in there and figure out, figure out what's good. And you never can. You never can, um, do it like them. Happy Thanksgiving to y'all. Y'all enjoy the holiday. <laughs>